And that is what this is all about. We love it. Those close clashes are so fun to watch. Miguel Pupo is now up against Jeremy Flores, one of the smoothest goofy footers that we have on the championship tour. Up against Jeremy Flores, who's had a real return to form these past two seasons. Had that win over in Tahiti last year. You know, a star he is at places like Chopu, the, the kid charges, but Jeremy is feisty and he can link together some really committed moves at places like J-Bay. Uh, a little rougher around the edges, which is kind of fun to watch. You know, he doesn't have that syrupy, cruisy, Tom Kern-esque brand of surfing out here. Um, so it makes it less predictable. And uh, he's also one of the surfers that really doesn't mind sliding his tail block at the end of his turns. Puts a lot of torque in it. I feel based on his form this year, Jeremy Flores is in a funky position on the ratings, 30th. He has looked sharp uh, every time he's pulled the jersey on. And he's not relying on a CT finish alone to ensure his place on the CT for 2017. And uh, the 24-year-old Brazilian is out there with priority. Let's check out this second ride for Flores. Still waiting for scores to drop on this wave, but a beautiful little kind of impromptu tube ride there for Jeremy. He was going to tag the lip and stepped on the brakes because he saw that thing kind of stand up. So great instincts for Jeremy and got a second barrel and snuck out the doggy door. So uh, just dropping a five point ride for that wave right there. From where he was positioned this time last year in the top 10, here goes Miguel looking to put a decent number up. In the early stages, a medium sized ride, seven with a lot of speed and plenty of style as always. And he is busy on this ride. A nice sequence of backhand jams and a strong finish, maybe the best turn right there on the closeout. Pretty amazing surfing right there from Miguel Pupo. And uh, obviously the judge is not giving a whole lot of credit this morning for barrels. You know, Jeremy got two decent little tube rides there. Really interesting. Uh, just looking at these two surfers. Very different approaches. Jeremy, super aggressive. Miguel just has that really smooth flow. But when he lets a, a big committed turn go, he can unload a lot of power. Yeah, he he has, uh, you know, power from perfect technique is what it is. And he's got that great foundation where he knows exactly where to hit the lip to maximize throwing tons of spray. He never seems to slide and kind of break his speed. Uh, he gets a lot of projection through those tight arcs and carves. Uh, so, you know, just amazing fundamentals from Miguel Pupo. And, and on top of that, he's got, a, you know, a beautiful style. Everything looks right in his arms, his legs. Um, you know, he doesn't have any sharp angles in his body the way he surfs. Uh, you know, it's really pretty to watch. It means a lot. Uh, so that top 22, you got to be there or higher to qualify for next year. Well, look at these dreamy conditions for Jeremy Flores as he commits to that first sec section and just kicks the tail of his board through the lip, setting up this inside line now. This wave's standing up beautifully. And through the rail of his board into the water, but bogged down and as a result, lost some momentum and couldn't get back in front of that ride. It was a beautiful wave and he knows it. And then did not, you know, execute the inside ball, which he had. Miguel Pupo is, you know, he's definitely flowing down the line right now. He's doing some great surfing, nice and clean, but um, you know, Jeremy's wave was had so much more to offer, but Miguel's going to go to town on the inside right here, hopefully get some more as he snaps away. Another hack up into the lip right there, and he's going to try and finish again on the inside. Nope, kicks out. Um, you know, back to the Jeremy Flores' wave, and ended up getting hung up in the bowl, kind of looking down the line. As you can see, you know, this wave just opened up into perfect form. Nice setup hack right there, and then came down as it doubled up right here. It comes off the bottom, bang, and I think he was just off a hair thinking about what was to come. He missed the entire inside section of that wave and showed a lot of frustration as he came up. Who won the fight between Jeremy and his equipment? Uh, I think his equipment did. I don't think you can beat your equipment. <laughs> What's going to happen when you're punching your board, Ross? You're going to damage your board. You might split your knuckles. Yeah, you got to watch out for that stringer. For sure, a piece of wood will split your knuckle in half, and that's right where he was punching. But uh, you know, dropped a 4.7 out 
Uh, I really liked the first couple of moves, too. Well, even threw an elbow in there. So mixing it up. But, uh, you know, again, we talked about Jeremy. He runs hot, um, but there's so much time left in his heat. So that, uh, that spice. Jeremy throwing his best combo into his board at this stage. But he's got another nice-looking wave here and linking together a pretty solid start. And there is a huge turn that's going to rack up a lot of points. Let's see if he can finish this one off as he moves through to the inside. Throws that tail. He'll take a fall there, but he should still register a pretty decent number for this wave. <laughs> other than yourself. I had a... a well, let's, let's see what Jeremy got done before he came unstuck. I like the way Jeremy's surfing right now, though. You can see he is so fired up, putting a lot of energy into each move. Nice variety right there, a big tag. And a layback snap, just got a touch hung up. That might have threw him off tempo just a little bit. Tried to force that tail slide and got stuck behind. So I felt like the biggest idiot ever. I palled in and threw my shoulder, shoulder out because I was throwing a tantrum. I thought you were going to say you splashed Sunny accidentally. <laughs> but here we go, Jeremy Flores. Even though he's frustrated at the moment, he's putting that anger to good use. Some very aggressive surfing there. Just the combination of three turns, but it was solid. Already has established the lead, and he might press further ahead here. That was a really well-constructed ride, despite the fact. Three really nice turns before he fell. Uh, so the judge is getting up to speed with that 7.17. As we see the replay here, that's his second nice little torquey snap. Steep section right there and floats it. So this is a score we're still waiting for the judges to drop. He got the first one, which I thought looked really nice, and I didn't know whether he was going to better his score or not, but my one doubled up pretty nice, and it was kind of quick, and I was just getting around it, but, yeah, I'm pretty happy to get the score there. And it's always so impressive to me, I mean, just chatting to you before, you're telling us that you have that ankle injury that you sustained in Fiji, just strapping it up and putting it out of your mind. How do you do that? Yeah, it was a bit of a tricky one. I hadn't really surfed much it before I even came here so I've just been playing around with straps and Mick gave me his ankle strap and Cross has been strapping me up so he is beyond capable of getting that 7.5 well, Jeremy's having a look at this one with priority he has to get moving Miguel he paddled for that wave but it doesn't affect Jeremy he drives around that section nice carve this wave's going to stand up here Jeremy just pacing himself at this point in time He'll need to get aggressive here on the inside. He's going to get caught behind. And he won't get the 7.57 required out of that rod. Uh, but he didn't get it. You know, uh, you, you got to leave a good taste in the judge's mouth with the, that closing maneuver before the wave closes out. And I love everything he got to start with here. A nice sweeping carve, good mix up gotta love the fact that there's no wind out here it just allows the surfers to be more creative have more variety so those first couple of maneuvers especially that hack that carve from Jeremy were, were really nice and tight uh, still tons of time left here but he's in danger of Miguel creating a, you know a bigger lead here you know Miguel got a 7.9 on a wave that was pretty small judges reviewing a, a couple of scores that have already dropped that score is not going to factor in for him 5.8 on his last ride. This carve right here is nice. Tight little arc. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, maybe he put too much torque into that carve. He got stuck behind. He goes Miguel with priority. Taps into a bigger wall here. Let's see if he can better his situation. Looking to get rid of a 6.83. Nice float. That's all he's going to get out of that wave. It ran off the section. That was a nice, solid set wave here. Well overhead for Miguel. So the biggest wave he's had so far in his heat. Just a nice little clean snap to start. Bigger effort on that second turn and a, a pretty heavy floater to finish. I don't think it's going to be a monster score, though. So this is going to keep Jeremy in the heat even have a shot at getting the lead back. Miguel on the inside without priority is going to try and push the requirement higher here. It's a smaller ride, he needs to do something big. And he goes to throw that tail well above the lip, it doesn't ride out of the move. Towards this medium sized set wave and he is trying to track it down. This might be it, two and a half minutes remaining. Jeremy, he is deep, he's going to get caught behind there. 
And that might be his last shot at it, Ross, because Miguel's going to get priority and it's going to be difficult for Jeremy now. He's going to have a swing on this smaller right on the inside with that priority. He has to go bonkers in order to chase down this 8.5. A decent start. Needs more, though. Bashes that lip. Wants this wall to stand up. Still in it at this point. As he goes for one of his under the lip, grab rail reverses. Can't ride out of it, though. 55 seconds, and that will be Jeremy's last shot at it. Threw down a big move. And, of course, just throwing salt into the wound of dreamy sets coming in. Yeah, and a couple of waves in it. Miguel doesn't even get around the section on his ride. So it could have been an ideal situation for Jeremy, but hindsight is a beautiful thing. And Jeremy didn't see too much rolling in when he took off on that small insider just moments ago. The heat coming to a close. And the Brazilian goofy footer fought his way back into the lead midway through that heat. And now he is just enjoying the freedom of riding a wave through to the inside here, knowing that he's into the third round. Well, I will say, Miguel Pupo looking really sharp. A couple of clean snaps on that last wave. Pretty solid heat for Miguel, 